hey everyone welcome back to my youtube channel so um we're going to be um covering the um right like the second part of the particle system video that we we started and um, if you haven't seen it um i'm going to hook up the link to the video at this point just at the top corner of the video yeah so um this particular video i'm just going to be covering the um dust particles just like what you're seeing on your screen right um and we're also going to be covering the snow snow effect yeah this yes yeah. yeah um my renders are not so perfect there's some glitch you can see we have any a, a freeze frame right so we'll just ignore that so i'm just going to be showing you um, all of this and how i made the camera animation and also the depth of field for focus and also motion blur yeah so we just dive right into it okay so as we all know like uh, making a particle system for a um an environment right it's 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 about volume right so imagine this is a space like this let's say this cube right this cube is like a um it's it's a space where we're having all our scene right mr wireframe so let's say this cube is a, a it's a scene where we're having maybe our environment let's say this is a this is a room or this is a city street right so i'm just going to like have have a cube basically scaled to fit in the size of my scene because the idea is that we want the particle systems to um that's the dust now to just contain this environment i don't want to have dust everywhere in the in the whole space right because it's going to tell on the system it's going to lag a lot so um i'm just going to um basically you have the freedom to scale your your cube to cover the space um where you want your dust to feel right you you have the freedom to do that it doesn't it doesn't really have to be like a perfect square cube do you understand if that makes sense so but for the purpose of the tutorial I'll just i'm just going to be using the default cube right to do that let me go back to the shader um view right okay so um so I'm going to just go to the particle systems and we're going to add a new particle system, the plus button, right? So when I press play, we have the default particles falling down. Mind you, this is um, using the face to fall off, right? The face of the cube fall off. But we want it to fall in the volume, right? So I'm just going to go to source here and switch from face to volume. So the, the um, particles fall even within the box, not just outside of the face alone. Do you understand? So um, next thing, I need to make sure I'm seeing inside of the box since it's about the volume, right? So we're just gonna like make this like a wireframe view. So by like not not through here, right? Not not through this wireframe view, right? Yeah, I think you can also use this, right? You can also use this. Um, I think that that's a kind of a quick way to even preview it. Um, yeah, or you can come here to the. Um, Objects properties, right? Let me go back to the object mode here. So come to the object properties and go down to viewport visibility. So a viewport display, just scroll down and switch display from texture to bounds, right? And you have this without going to wireframe. Because I think because if you go to wireframe here, it means everything in your scene is going to be wireframe. But if you, for example, add like a second mesh, you can see this is this is not in wireframe because we set only this to wireframe but if you had used this option here everything will wire, wireframe and you wouldn't want that right so that's the reason why i'm not using this for a wireframe mode you understand yeah so let me let me clear this out of the way yeah so when we play we have this um some particles falling in in volume right so the next thing we need to just um select your particle system go to your particle settings right we need to turn off the gravity. So go to field weight, turn off gravity to zero, right? And we have something like this, right? And then let's go back to the top settings emission. Um, change the end to one. We want them in a, in a place, right? Yeah, this way, right? So, but we have something, uh, we have the velocity pushing it away from the faces. Um, and again, it's also stopping at, uh, I think at 50. We need to change the lifetime to, let's increase it to maybe like a thousand, right? 
So let's increase to a thousand. So we, it's going to be moving for as long as the timeline stays, which is 250, right? So, but we have something it's moving on the faces, right? Because of velocity and velocity push it on the normal, right? So come to velocity and you can, you can turn, you can turn it to maybe zero, let's turn it to zero, right? So it stays in one place. So we just need to, to use um, randomize, go to randomize on that velocity and just play with the value. Let's try one to see what's going to happen, right? Try one, let's see. Yeah, so we have this, it's moving very randomly in one space, right? It's actually spread now, like it should. But I think value one is too much. Let me use point zero 0.05, let's see what we're gonna get. Yes, I, I, I think this kind of works for me because um, I think dust particles move very, very slow. Let me show you our video reference again, for example, right? So it just depends on how you would want and depends on the atmosphere. Is it windy or not, right? So if it's too fast for you, you can also make it more slower, right? So let's see. Yeah, so let's just work with this. This works for me, right? So um, so let's add um, an object to instance the particle. So we'll just shift A. I'm going to use an icosphere, right? Just use your move to or G to grab and push it away, right? Push this aside. And then I'm going to go to the particle um, system, go to render, switch render of halo to object, and then go to instance object and select your icosphere that you just created, right? So you can see it's instancing that object, right? Unfortunately, like it shows like a wireframe of the right. I really don't know why and how to switch it back. Um, if you know how to do that, please just tell me how to do that in the comment section, right? I don't like it showing just this wireframe boxes. I want to see this object showing, not the wireframe. Okay, um, so um, yeah, for that, let's just reduce the scale of this package because in my, in my opinion, it's, it's too big. So I'm just going to go to the um, render. We have scale. You can play with the scale, right? You can see. So we're going to make it um, very tiny, right? So um, that's it. Let's see. We have this dust here. So next thing, we need to add like a dust shader to our object here. So select this and go to your shading tab, click on the new button, right? And then just uh, choose like a dust particle color, right? Something brown. Let's reduce the roughness to, to one, yeah. So it doesn't shine. We don't want any reflective um, shininess in our dust. Yeah, I think that that should work. So when we render this, for example, let me go to the camera and render. We are going to have the the box still showing in view. It's going to be covering um, the dust. So let me just show you what it's going to look like. Um, it's not even still working, right? Okay, so um, so let me let's add an HDRI to the environment. Let's go to wall here. Let's shift A, add an environment texture and connect this open. Just select any of your HDR you have and then um, we are basically going to have our environment showing this way, right? So when I go to render and render image, you can see the box is still covering our particles. So we need to make that box transparent, right? So let's do that. So just select the box switch this back to objects and um, this is the box material right so we need to just disconnect this principal bsdf and just add a transparent transparent um bsdf so remember how to add a node right shift a basically shift a and then search for what you want or you can come here and press add here and type transparent and you're going to see it here so that's how i did that just in case you don't know so connect the bsdf to surface and then that's it so let's go back to render, render image. The box is transparent, okay, but it's still black because we need to make sure alpha is turned on in our um, EV render set settings. So make sure the box is selected, go to your um, shader settings here and go to your settings right here and then make sure you change blend mode from opaque to alpha hash and that's gonna solve the problem, right? So let's render image to see, we can see our uh, speckle of dust in the air, right? 
So if this is too big for you, you can still reduce the scale as tiny as you would want to you get. Yeah, so I think we are we're almost done with this um dust um simulation. So let's let's try to reduce the scale of the particles because I feel like it's kind of big. Go to render. Let's just reduce the scale a bit. Sorry. I think this is even the, this is even the lowest size we can get. Let me add one more zero here. Yes, we can get more smaller size. All right, so let's go. No, this is too tiny. So let me just add. This is like 0 0.00, maybe 8. Yes, 0 0.08. Let me test and see your render image. Okay, so let, let me just use this for, for this tutorial, right? And let me make it more, more, so much more than this. It's too scanty for me. So we're going to go to children right here and then click on simple. You see, we have so many of them, but they are clustered together and it looks too arranged and we don't want that. So let's go to, um, I think radius. You can play with, play with the value of radius, just create a bit. I'm using 0 0.08. We can also play with randomized size. So it makes some bigger and some smaller randomly, right? And also you can also play with the size as well. I think, yeah, we can reduce it more from here again. Let's play with the seed value again. It gives it more randomness, basically. That's what the seed value does. It just makes it more random. So let's let's check to see what we have. Render image. Yeah, like, <laughs> it's kind of way too much. So it just depends on what you are looking for, right? So let's just take this down. So the render amount is 100. Let's take it down to 10 as as the display amount. Let's make it 10. So go to render and render image. Yeah, I think this is okay, right? So um, let's just let's just close this. And um, so final thing, let's just um, set our camera and then press N, go to view and make sure you lock camera to view. Right, so I'm just going to plan it to go inside the scene, right? I'm just going to look for a particular angle. Let me turn on my render view here. I'm just going to look for a, a particular angle, right? And just set a keyframe. I to keyframe. And then I'm just move my camera a bit. Set another keyframe. Yeah, so I'm just going to have bit of camera animation right not something crazy i think this is a bit too much i need to just um let me remove the motion backward yeah i need, I need very slow slow motion slow movements okay no in fact you know what i'm not gonna do any camera animation i'll just make it still so we can see the particle moving on its own so this HDR is not ideal because this is an like indoor environment, like indoor indoor studio. It's not gonna be ideal to see particles moving in the house like this, right? Actually, I've used like an external HDR, but um, you can you could use any other HDR that you choose to use. Yeah, so I think this works for me. So next, I'm gonna um, create my camera depth of field. So come to your camera. Make sure your camera is selected in outline now or here, right? Then select your camera icon here. And then you see depth of field. Make sure you check the box. You can drop it down. You see focus on object, right? Meaning um, where should should the um, camera focus on, right? So um, so let me move this away from our view. So go back to the camera. So I'm um, I'm basically going to create like an empty shift A, create an empty, an arrow. So this MT is just basically trying to tell the camera where to focus on. That's what the MT does. The name is an MT, meaning it's not going to show in your render, right? But it's just for positioning. Okay, so after positioning the MT, right, at the very reasonable position, some somewhere like kind of close to the camera this way, right? I'm just going to go back to the camera view and um, let's uh, add our depth of field. Select the camera. Select the camera icon here. So make sure um, depth of field is checked on like this, right? And turn on the um, drop down icon here. 
click on the box you see your empty pick that empty and then let's use the extra four like one right to make it really let's use four for the blades yeah let's just see how what we have here render render image yeah i think something like this works right if we have some focus on the one at, at the distance there kind of blurred out yeah, so um we can change the color of these particles it's looking to brown right let's let me change the color of the particles right so just select the atmosphere which added go to your material and see the color here just let me make it a little more brighter on the white side so let's render again yeah you can see just depends on what you want basically so if it's too if it's still big you can go, go ahead and reduce the size so i, I think that's just how to um to create the particles for your atmosphere right so we already know how to render this um, animation right you can choose to render maybe like um 100 frames or the whole timeline 250 frames depending on what you want to render so just go to your output settings go to here output here click on this file folder and just navigate to wherever you want to save it right and um make sure, make sure you name you name it right your name, what you want to render. I'm not going to render, I'm just going to show you how to do it. Those particles, click on accept, accept, right? So file format, change PNG to FMPEG video, this. And then for encoding, just click on this preset and choose the second one, H264 in Matroska. Just click that and that's it. So just go to your render and render animations. And if you're going to have your animations render. Once it's done, it's going to come as your video file. And that's it. Um, so um, I hope you find this very helpful. So I'm going to cut this video into two. The next video will be the snow effects, right? So um, thanks you guys for sticking by this kind of long video today. Thanks so much. Have a great one.